Well, not too long ago, it was uh, floated out there. Don't know how serious it is, but uh, certainly got a lot of people talking. And that's about the elk farm situation here in Alberta. And the, uh, I guess the proposal is to once again, go down and allow people to go on. And I don't want to use the word hunt, but shoot elk in a fenced or penned environment. And uh, no shortage of outrage around this. And a lot of it centered uh, with my next guest, Delinda Ryerson, who's the executive director of the Alberta Fish and Game Association, joins us. First of all, Delinda, thanks so much for taking some time. Absolutely. No, this is a, a very critical issue to the Alberta Fish and Game Association. And yeah, you hit the nail right on the head. Here we go again. Um, we fought the introduction of the game ranches back in the 90s um, and unfortunately lost that battle and this was also proposed a lot of people may not remember about 11 years ago in 2009 uh, we have record of our president then um, insisting that you know the Alberta Fish and Game Association be involved in consultations relating to what they were proposing as servant hunt harvesting preserves, which is what they're calling them today. So we're back here again. Um, we found out about the Alberta Elk Commission lobbying the provincial government back in January. Uh, so we wrote not only the Premier Kenny, uh, Minister Nixon, and Minister Dreeshin. Uh, a letter just inquiring about what they knew about it and our concerns, grave concerns, and I guess steadfast opposition to these servid harvesting preserves. Um, there's a whole suite of different ecological issues related to it. I think most importantly is the spread of chronic wasting disease. Yeah, I definitely, we don't definitely want to get into, into the CWD question, but just before we do, let's talk a yeah. little bit about, I guess, what the main driver is um, on behalf of the elk ranchers, and that is to stimulate economics. Um, you know, they're claiming upwards of, of uh, $500 million a year and 300 jobs. Um, in your mind, Delinda, is that, is that worth, um, and here's the perfect segue into chronic wasting disease, is that worth the potential spread of this disease uh, for economic reasons? Absolutely not. This is, you know, 300 people, 300 jobs, you know, and the implications that this would have not only ecologically and economically um, for 300 jobs, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, also, you know, we're going to see a, a decline in public support for hunting if, if they try to sell this as, as a form of hunting. Um, and are we not one step closer to paid access to private land, to be able to, as they're calling it, hunting, but shooting. So, so absolutely, this is not worth that. So in terms of chronic wasting disease, I mean, I... The, the 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 science is absolutely clear this is a, a transmissible disease uh, among cervid species uh you've got a, a captive audience in terms of the elk um and i think it's been proven uh time and time again although the elk commission denies it that uh it, it can be transmiss uh, transmissible from captive versus wild uh, but that's been proven to be a uh, a, a, a no-go zone. Yeah, and they they have continually uh, tried to deny that they introduced chronic wasting disease into the province as a result of their game ranches. And any wildlife biologist knows that that is exactly how this um, terrible disease was introduced and how it's being spread. So, you know, there should be no movement of captive cervids uh, or, or wild ones for that matter, but any kind of cervids between provinces or internationally. That is just gonna continue to propagate this problem. And as this, this issue propagates, um, it's going to only detrimentally influence our ungulate populations. And 
you know, it's it's bad enough now. We've demonstrated it in um, high prevalences in buck mule deer and elk. You know, what if this thing starts to spread more into other cervids like caribou that are already in trouble in some of our national parks or into moose that are, you know, subsist subsistence to indigenous communities and things. So, yeah, it's just it's terrifying, actually. Of course, Delinda, I know that you're very much aware of the fact that a number of years ago, the um, the hog situation in Alberta, wild hogs uh, were were allowed to be hunted in a in a penned environment. And now these things have escaped and they are listed as an invasive species. Absolutely. So this is another example of um, what they coined the term livestock diversification. Um, it's painted with the same brushes, this, these innovative tools that they want to use for recreational hunting, um, but not enough research done. Introducing, and I don't even like to use the word wild because they're, they're not wild, um, these, these hogs for opportunities for people to have to have these kind of penned hunts. Well, absolutely, they get out. They're totally ecologically destructive they'll eat you know ground nesting birds and their eggs and yeah small children if they could get a hold of them so they're very invasive uh i think they're known as one of the most widespread invasive species or widespread um medium-sized mammals in the world so you know not enough work is done and now we have this huge issue and who's left to clean up some of these uh, ecological disasters is the taxpayers, you know, and it's for the in the name of giving these, you know, entrepreneurial opportunities to a handful of people. Same thing with with the game ranching. It's a handful of people that are going to benefit and. You know, as we propagate chronic wasting disease and it's potentially, you know, detrimental effects on human health and us exporting, you know, crops or, you know, the, the decline in our ungulate populations, absolutely unacceptable. We know enough about it, which we, you know, should have known about the boars that we need to stop it immediately. Delinda, you, you made a point earlier about the damage to the reputation of hunting. Uh, let's explore that for a moment, because do you think people, the average person living in, in a city or, or anywhere that maybe is not involved in hunting um, can make a distinction between what would happen in one of these penned environments versus what you and I and, and a hundred thousand other Albertans go out and enjoy uh, on a seasonal basis? Well, because of, you know, their experience and, and potentially no background in the importance of hunting as a conservation tool. Um, and the, the importance of it is as a, uh, you know, a North American kind of heritage. No, they're not going to understand the difference. And quite frankly, you know, I think it's going to, it's going to look bad for ethical hunters. Um, and we're not going to get that public support that we need and try to, you know, get other people interested in this important uh, sport. Well, I know that the province is looking at uh, doing some some roundtables, whether those are in person or or virtually. We haven't heard yet, but I I got to imagine that you, along with your twenty thousand plus members of the AFGA, will be uh, will be uh, fairly forcefully, I would think, uh, putting out some opinions on on this move. Absolutely. We're trying to make this front and center. It's that important to us. And I think it's that important to, um, you know, just the average Albertan to understand, to increase their awareness about this, this important issue. Um, I think a lot of people are just looking at it like, well, what would the harm be by giving, you know, these poor ranchers this entrepreneurial opportunity? Um, but there are very, very serious consequences as we talked about both ecologically economically and you know the hunting reputation so we can't let this 
um, just go ahead. All right. Delenda, thank you so much. And of course, we'll be watching and, and look forward to chatting more about this topic with you down the road. Absolutely. Thank you, Michael.